Hello, Diddar. Uh, welcome to the penultimate Friday assembly of this year, this school year. Um, I want to say firstly, again, a massive thank you to so many of you this week, today, who have been doing that hardest of things and staying at home, staying away from school uh, and self-isolating. And it's just very difficult indeed for so many of you right now. We know this uh, and it doesn't make it any better that we know this, but I hope that you know we are all thinking about you and we are all so very grateful for what you are doing. Um, we are still here for you and we are here to help you and your grown-ups in any way that we possibly can. So please, please just get in touch. Grown-ups, you know my email address, it's on all the letters and so on. Children, you've got your Shobi accounts, we are here to help if there's anything you need, just ask. For many of you, we will be seeing you next week at some time and we can't wait. For all of you, we will do our level best to make sure that we have the very, very best end of term next week and that it's a celebration of you guys, of all of us and all that you've all achieved this year because you've been amazing. Not just this week, not just this term, but this year, Pempole, you have been incredible. You've overcome big challenges, you've stretched yourselves in terms of what you want to achieve and you've kept your smiles going, which is amazing. So well done, all of you, and thank you. Now, there's a couple of other well dones, or one other specific well done, I'd like to say, which is to Isla McLeod in class five. Now, you may remember some of you, you met with the team from Kids Make Stuff. That is a very cool programme. I know some of you have watched it already. And the Kids Make Stuff team were lovely. They came to meet with lots of you. They led some workshops and they had some meetings. And they talked about your ideas for inventions and cool things that you can make. Um, and lots of you made some ideas of your own and shared them with the Kids, kids Invent Stuff team. And they had lots of ideas from people all over the country. Um, and they looked at lots of them and they decided a few of them that they wanted to make. And Isla McLeod as you know already, your design is being made right now by the Kids Make Stuff team. And very soon, I think next week on Wednesday, your programme will be live and we'll share that link with you in a newsletter as well, where you will see your creation actually being made. And they are also, I believe, taking it up to London to share with some very interesting people up there, your actual invention. It's really exciting. There's some sneak previews of some very cryptic ideas about what your creation might be about. They said that they can't tell me too much at the moment. I wonder if we can work out what might be going on from these pictures. Uh, all of you involved in that, in that project, well done. And Island Cloud, really well done. It's great and very exciting to see what you have actually created. And one final thing that I'd like to talk about today, and it does involve a little bit of an extract from this book, is reading. Now you are all avid readers and that makes me very happy. And the summer is the perfect time to unwind and relax and read. Uh, and the summer reading challenge at the library is one thing that you can definitely get involved with. There's a short video from the guys at the library I'll show you in just a moment. But I wanted to read you an extract from this book which reminds me, and all of us hopefully, why reading is one of the most powerful things in the world. Hopefully many of you will know Matilda, and if you don't, many more of you will know Roald Dahl. Let's enjoy a bit of Matilda's story. Hmm, where were we going to start from? By the time she was three, Matilda had taught herself to read by studying newspapers and magazines that lay around the house. At the age of four, she could read fast and well, and she naturally began hankering after books. The only book in the whole of this enlightened household was something called Easy Cooking, belonging to her mother. And when she had read this from cover to cover and had learned all the recipes by heart, she decided she wanted something more interesting. Daddy, 
she said. Do you think you could buy me a book? Now, I didn't prepare for this, but if you don't know the story, her daddy isn't very nice. A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, daddy. What's wrong with a tally, for heaven's sake? We've got a lovely tally with a 12-inch screen, and now you're coming asking for a book. You're getting spoiled, my girl. Nearly every weekday afternoon, Matilda was left alone in the house. Her, her brother, five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work. And her mother went out playing bingo in a town eight miles away. Mrs Wormwood was hooked on bingo and played it five afternoons a week. On the afternoon of the day when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out, all by herself, to walk to the public library in the village. Don't do that, please. This is a story. Do not go to the library by yourselves unless you are definitely old enough and you definitely have your grown-ups permission. When she arrived, she introduced herself to the librarian, Mrs Phelps. She asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Mrs Phelps, slightly taken aback by, at the arrival of such a tiny girl unaccompanied by a parent, nevertheless told her that she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're over there on those lower shelves, Mrs Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, Matilda said. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk took only ten minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cosy corner, devouring one book after another. When she'd read every single book in the children's book in the place, she started wandering around in search of something else. Mrs Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, now got up from her desk and went over to her. Can I help you, Matilda? she asked. I'm wondering what to read next, Matilda said. I've finished all the children's books. You mean you've looked at the pictures? Yes, but I've read the books as well. Mrs Phelps looked down at Matilda from her great height, and Matilda looked right back up at her. I thought some were very poor, Matilda said, but the others were very lovely. I liked the secret garden best of all. It was full of mystery. The mystery of the room behind the closed door and the mystery of the garden behind the big wall. Mrs Phelps was stunned. Exactly how old are you, Matilda? she asked. Four years and three months, Matilda said. Mrs Phelps was more stunned than ever, but she had the sense not to show it. What sort of book would you like to read next? she asked. Matilda said, I would like a really good one that grown-ups read. A famous one. I don't know any names. Mrs Phelps looked along the shelves, taking her time. She didn't quite know what to bring out. How, she asked herself, does one choose a famous grown-up book for a four-year-old girl? Her first thought was to pick a young teenager's romance of the kind that's written for 15-year-old schoolgirls, but for some reason she found herself instinctively walking past that particular shelf. Try this, she said at long last. It's very famous and very good. If it's too long for you, just let me know and I'll find you something a, a bit easier. Great Expectations, Matilda read, by Charles Dickens. I'd love to try it. I must be mad, Mrs Phelps told herself. But to Matilda, she said, of course you may try it. Over the next few afternoons, Mrs Phelps could hardly take her eyes from the small girl sitting for hour after hour in the big armchair at the far end of the room with the book on her lap. It was necessary to rest it on her lap because it was too heavy for her to hold up which meant she had to sit leaning forward in order to read. And a strange sight it was. This tiny, dark-haired person sitting there with her feet nowhere near touching the floor, totally absorbed in the wonderful adventures of Pip and old, old Miss Havisham, Havisham and her cobwebbed house, and by the spell of magic that Dickens, the great storyteller, had woven with his words. The only movement was from the reader, was the lifting of the hand every now and then to turn over a page. And Mrs Phelps always felt sad when the time came for her to cross the floor and said, it's ten to five, Matilda. And then a pause there. As she goes on, she reads through a whole world of incredible books. Classics by 
very famous authors. Really incredible books that take her to far off lands and far off places. And she goes on so many adventures that you would not believe. And that is the power of reading. Now, you don't need to go to the library when you're four and read Great Expectations by Charles Fitz Dickens. That's probably reaching a little bit too far and not necessary. However, if you read, whatever you read, it opens up to you the whole world. It opens a whole world of learning, a whole world of adventure, and a whole world of discovery for you as well. So reading during the summer, reading all the time, but reading during the summer in particular is so very important. I'm going to hand over now to two people you might recognise, hopefully you will, if you frequent the library. Uh, they've made a short video for you. Here you go. Hi, we're from Hale Library and we're here to tell you about the Summer Reading Challenge this year. It's based on wild world heroes and it's all about nature and helping the environment and the people and animals that live around you and worldwide. The launch day is Saturday the 10th of July and it's free for everyone to do and a lot of you probably have done it in previous years. For those of you that don't know about it, you come to the library, you join up, you get your Wild World Heroes little map and every two books you read, you get some stinky scratch and sniff stickers. There's always a stinky one on there and you have to work out where they go on here and there's various ways that you can make your environment better and the stickers show you some nice ideas. And every two books, as well as getting the stickers, you get little rewards like a chatterbox, a bookmark, a fridge magnet. And when you've read six books in total, you get a medal as well. Yay! It will go all the way until mid-September. So you've got lots of time to read those six books. It can be any books you like. It can be joke books. It could be non-fiction. It could be books about how to save the planet graphic novels, beast quest, rainbow fairies, anything you like. Um, all the libraries are doing it and we're all starting on that day. If you go to a library before that, you're going to be able to borrow books, but you won't get your starter pack until 10th of July or after. At Hale Library, we're letting people borrow books, but we're doing a collection service. So you can come along to the library and we'll pick books for you. Um, because we're not having people in at the moment, but we always try and help you as much as we can and we're always scurrying around bringing books. Um, any questions, come on down to Hell Library and visit us. We're open Mondays and Fridays, 9.30 till 1.30, and Wednesdays, we're open 9.30 till 5, and Saturday mornings, 9.30 till 12.30. Bye! Hope to see you soon! There we go. Uh, the Summer Reading Challenge at the Library. So, thank you all. This is uh, the weekend shortly and it is going to be very warm. Please don't forget to drink lots of water. If you can go outside, please get lots of sun lotion on and keep yourselves very safe. I can't wait to see you next week for our last week of term. Goodness me. Whether you're learning from home or learning in school, we will make it a great week. Okay, thank you all. See you later.